<laughs> Who? Jars. Hugh Jars. Hugh Jars. Hugh Jars. Hugh. Hugh. You make me the Hugh Jars. <laughs> Good evening, Hugh Jars. Huge Jars. I love that name. Oh. Jars. Hugh Jars. No, only Lord. <laughs> Lord Hugh Jars. Huge jars. Huge ass. And the Hugh, Hugh Yarts. Uh, please let me know how you pronounce your last name. Huge anus. Good evening, Mr. Jars. Huge ass. And Hugh Jars. I love you, Hugh. Greetings and salutations. This is Hugh Jars. If you saw my last video, You'll know about my great observation in the Southern Hemisphere Project, or GOSH for short. I've heard more than one flat earther say that they would change their minds if it could be shown that the stars looking south from the three non-Antarctic continents at the same time are the same. The reason why this is a flat earth killer is obvious when you look at the AE map, which is the preferred view of the flying pizza that most flirts believe in religiously. Australia and South America are on opposite sides of the world according to this map. So if we are living on a stationary frisbee under a rotating celestial sphere, then there's no way the stars looking south could possibly be the same on the three southern hemisphere continents. Unfortunately, to see stars, you need it to be nighttime. Reality interjects here and says that because of the tilt of the Earth's axis, the only time that it is night in all three places at the same time is around the longest night of the year, which is on June 21st. So for about a week either side of then, such an observation is possible. It will be just after sunset in South America, middle of the night in Southern Africa, and near sunrise in Western Australia. This difficulty is why it hasn't really been done before, and by Flurf logic, if it has never been done, that's because it's impossible. But if we do this observation, we should easily show that it is possible, and at least the Flurfs will no longer have that excuse. So to kill this flat earth idea, I'm asking for people in South America, Southern Africa, and Western Australia to participate in the observation. The more observers that we have, the more indisputable the results. Not that flirts ever accept empirical results, but that doesn't matter. People are, who are too far gone are not our concern. We're worried about those who are on the fringe and who might go either way, but who are genuinely seeking the truth. If you think you can help, email me on hugeass1 at gmail.com. But first, look at timeanddate.com. If you are in South America, check if it will at least be half an hour after sunset on June 21st at 2300 GMT. You'll have to look up your time zone if you don't know it already and figure that out. Anyone in Southern Africa should have night already, so that will work for you. And if you are in Western Australia, make sure sunrise where you are on the 22nd is no earlier than 7 a.m. and preferably later. Perth sunrise is 7.17, for example, but broom won't work because that's 6.22. The intention is to live stream what you see in each location so it's clear that everyone is seeing the same thing at the same time and hence we're killing again, we're once again killing Flat Earth. To participate, you'll need a few things. Number one requirement, a camera capable of showing the Southern Cross as an example, preferably with a tripod to make it easier. To test, go out any night and video the Southern Cross. If you can't see it in the resulting video, you might need to figure out access to a better device. Number two, download Discord if you haven't already and connect with me so that I can tie your feed into the live stream. Number three requirement, a safe place to perform your observation, preferably away from city lights. I appreciate not all countries are as safe as mine, but that also disqualifies me from advising you how to manage that risk. So that's up to you to make decisions about. I don't want anyone putting themselves in danger for this. Number four requirement, a reliable internet connection. Last thing we need is a bad connection or lots of dropouts. If we don't have at least one person observing from each continent at the same time, then we really don't have enough data. Again, how you ensure your connection will depend on what's available in your location, so that has to be up to you to manage. Number five requirement, the ability to be outside at 2300 GMT on June 21st and a week or so either side of that. Because of the weather factor, we might start attempting this on June 14th and do it each night until we get it. This might mean you need to rearrange your schedules to be available. I think that covers it for now. Many thanks to all those who have already expressed interest. This is starting to get exciting. So what are you waiting for? Send me an email and let's kill the flat earth together.